You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. What could Real Madrid look like in five years' time? Well, depending on whether they acquire Kylian Mbappe and Erling Brault Haaland, as they kind of intend to, there are going to be a lot of changes. This is what Real Madrid currently would probably line up as their first choice now, and you'll notice that I've put very helpfully, little numbers for each person. That is how old they're going to be in five years' time. No Arsenal Twitter jokes here about 28, 29, whatever it was. So some of these players clearly are going to be over the hill. Luka Modric, probably Kroos, Karim Benzema. Yes, obviously footballers nowadays have a greater degree of athleticism and their careers can be prolonged, but we can be fairly confident that some of these guys are going to have retired by then. Probably Alaba as well, although Sergio Ramos still going strong at 34-35. So let's look at where players might come in. If we get rid of Benzema, let's assume that they sign Haaland. Very exciting, and we've done another video where we talk about how that might work with Mbappe. Speaking of Mbappe, where is he? Let's bring him in here. Now that's pretty fierce. You've got two of the best footballers in the world in their sort of mid to late 20s. Uh, that's very exciting. Add in there Vinicius Jr. and you've got a front three that could potentially be the best in the world for this whole period. Behind that though, this midfield needs quite a bit of work. And there's a couple of ways that Real Madrid can get around this. Casemiro as the anchor could potentially play, although he has had more injury problems of late. But let's revamp the entire midfield. And this is exciting because here we start talking about players coming up from Real Madrid's youth system, the Castilla. There's a couple that people are very excited by, and one of them is Antonio Blanco. Now, Antonio Blanco can play as the deepest in a midfield three, uh, think a sort of Xabi Alonso type player, string puller, so you get these kind of, you know, sit back here and play these long passes out like here, control the ball so that someone like Holland can run into it. That's really good, but also in Castilla, he is used to sometimes playing in a double pivot. So that works really neatly because what we can do is put him here on the left side of this double pivot and bring in, where are you? Eduardo Camavinga. Now, Eduardo Camavinga, everybody was hugely excited about him in the summer. He made a big money move to Real Madrid. He's a very, very exciting player. One of the things about Camavinga is that at the moment, it's probably difficult to say what his best role is. He's exceptional in the tackle. He's really good at reading the game and making interceptions. So you could have him as a kind of ball-winning, screening type of midfielder there. But then you waste another of his abilities, which is to get up into this right half space and play cute little passes here, carry the ball forwards. That'll work well with Mbappe playing in this wider role here and then cutting inside. And in that double pivot there, you get the best of Eduardo Camavinga, who will be only 24 at this point. So you get the ball winning, you get the interceptions, it takes a little bit of the defensive onus off Antonio Blanco, who can then sit back and play those sorts of passes, but also Blanco can then tuck in here, our wing backs can come into this position, and that gives Camavinga the license to push forwards. But we're missing a player. Here. Sergio Arribas. Now, if you talk to people who regularly watch the Castilla Real Madrid's kind of second team, Sergio Arribas is the one they're really, really excited about. He is a player who is a kind of diminutive, tricky playmaker. He can play out here on the right-hand side and cut in. He's naturally left-footed. So you get that ability to cut inside and fire shots off like that, or play clever little passes in field like this but he's also really, really good, quick one-twos, so you can see him pivoting off someone like Haaland here, or creating interesting little overlaps and runs here with someone like Mbappe. He, as I said, does like to play off this right-hand side and use his stronger left foot, but he works really well as a 10 as well. And if Real Madrid want to play a sort of 4-2-3-1, there's a really, really natural system here where Vinicius is coming inside, Arribas is working this area as the 10, Mbappe's making runs in behind here and scoring off his stronger right foot, and Haaland is just creating chaos up front because that's what he does. This would be a very, very good transitional team as well because Blanco can sit back here and spray these passes around, Arribas has the ability to link the play, Camavinga can join in here but also fall back and shield. That would work really, really well. They do have an option too, Let's get rid of these. If they don't want to use Arribas, although 
once he gets into the first team consideration, he's probably going to be there for quite a while. They can also play Valverde here like this. So they could revert to that more orthodox 4-3-3. Valverde's only going to be 28 at this point in time. He's a strong all-round midfielder, and that looks like a really, really good basis for this attacking, attacking trident. Garbled my words a bit there, but I'm going to keep going. In defense, though, this is where we have some issues. Now, we have no issues here with Militao. He was a really, really astute acquisition. Slightly rocky start to his Real Madrid career, but he's become one of the best defenders in La Liga. I don't think anyone would argue that. He's only going to be 29, so his position is solid. Thibaut Courtois here in goal. Andre Lunin is the backup, but 35 is not really any age for a goalkeeper at this point in time. Advances in sports science and Courtois' professionalism mean that it's very likely he could continue to inhabit this role should he wish to. Lunin looks like a decent backup. There are other good young goalkeepers out there, but I think these bigger clubs, you know, Ter Stegen has made, God knows, like 400 appearances for Barcelona now. When these big clubs get a goalkeeper, they like to hang on to him. So let's keep him there. The rest of it is a little tricky. Not the left back slot. I mean, Mendy at 31 will still be fine, by the way, but where are you? Gutierrez. Now, Gutierrez has already played first team football for Real Madrid. He's only gonna be 25 in five years time. He's a good attacking left back. He can get forwards, he can tuck inside. He can basically do everything that you would want him to do. Ancelotti's been quite happy with his contributions. I think Zidane brought him into the squad before Ancelotti took over. When Real Madrid built these kind of Galactico era teams, what they liked to do was balance the, the acquisition of world-class superstars, people like Zinedine Zidane, for example, or Luis Figo. They would have their, uh, you know, Fernando Iera or Ivan Helguera or Michel Salgado as well at the back often, particularly. Also people like Guti and Raul, you know, who would maybe get poached from other young academies. But they'd, they'd have like a core of Spanish players that had been at the club for quite a long time or had been purchased for not very much money. And Gutierrez is one of those sorts of players. Like he's good enough to be in the team for sure. And it also means that they don't have to go out and spend big money on another left back. Over here, it's likely that Alaba's going to go because he'll be 34. Let's get rid of Carvajal as well, although potentially he could continue. Pablo Ramon is an interesting one. Now, he can play as a centre-back or as a right-back. And what I quite like here is if we stick him on this right-hand side, it allows Real to create this kind of shape that we've seen. Let's have Alaba back in here for ease. The shape where one of the fullbacks gets really far forwards and the other one kind of tucks in a little bit more, keeps it secure, can get forwards if required or push up into this sort of area, but is a more orthodox, more conservative fullback. If you have someone like Mbappe creating the width on this side here or Camavinga making these runs out here, then you get this kind of shape which a lot of teams are using at the moment where the fullback's not getting quite so high up. If we keep him here, then what we've got is this position here. And I think if you're Real Madrid and you're looking past the acquisitions of Haaland and Mbappe, obviously, yes, there may be other attacking talents that they'll, they'll look to purchase in the future, and we'll come to that in a second. But this left-sided centre-back slot is the one where I think they're going to maybe look to concentrate their spending power if they acquire those other two players. There are some good young centre-backs, talking about people like Benoit Badashile or Edmund Topsoba. Maybe there will be someone coming through the Castilla as well. But this is probably the one position where they might look at it and go, we aren't set for the next five, six, seven years, assuming they get Haaland and Mbappe. It's this left-sided centre-back slot. Now, Alaba, 34, could still do a job for them. He's quick, but this is probably the area. I think it's also worth saying that, as we've just said with Real Madrid, they do like to go out and spend a lot of money. So it's possible that in this sort of area of the pitch as well, the 10 roll, you might see them looking to buy, I don't know, someone like Florian Wirtz, for example. You know, one of these really exciting upcoming talents. But it's very, very hard with the financial prudence that La Liga is currently working under because of the pandemic to see them splashing a huge amount of money past Mbappe and Haaland and potentially this left-sided centre-back because they don't need to. This is what's really exciting for Real Madrid. They can still feed that kind of Galactico thing, 
by getting Mbappe, by getting Haaland, but they've got this core of players who are going to be in their mid to sort of early, late 20s. That's a terrible phrase, my apologies. But people who've come through the youth system like Blanco, like Arribas here, like Gutierrez, and that's very, very exciting because there's nothing like a club being able to bring through its own cohort of players into the first team and then cherry pick some stars to surround them. That's how Real Madrid did the Galactico era under Florentino Perez, and it looks like they could be headed for another one. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Oli Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.